Johnston. Um, I am from Auckland, New Zealand, and I came to London in July 2014. It's been two and a half years, and I'm still here. <laughs> My name is Renee, Renee Donner. Um, I'm 37, born in 1978, and yeah, I'm, I'm German. I am Marco, and I'm from Pavia, which is near Milano, Italy. I'm Martina, I'm from Italy as well, from Rome. My name is John, um, I'm originally from Brest in France. My name is Robbie J. Martin. I'm 25 years old. I'm from Perth, Western Australia, and I've been here almost three and a half years now. My name is Manuel De Silva, and uh, I'm 31 years old. I'm from Belgium, more specifically Brussels. And uh, I came to London on, uh, on the 5th of June, 2015. It was in October, so it was already like dark, very unpleasant weather as it tends to be. I landed the ferry in Newcastle, <laughs> the, cheapest, the cheapest ferry I could get. Yeah. took two days to come over here because it was so cheap. The slowest moving vessel on the... If it would have gone any slower, it would have gone backwards. She decided to come here and I decided to support her, but I, I didn't want to come at the same time. We are married, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we are married. <laughs> I know that her choice was the best choice for her and for me and for us. It was in, um, in 1989 when the Russian soldiers left Hungary. So the only thing what we realized, oh my God, we stopped learning Russian, we have to start English. Um, I came into the UK to learn the language and to start with, I fell in love with the country, I fell in love with the people and I stayed for the last past 25 years. So the only, only way to actually come over to the UK or the US was through au pair visa. I actually have a friend, she was here already and she was the one who convinced me to come here. If you have a dream, you have the opportunity to make it real there. So I basically dropped out of college. My mother always told me to find what I love. I chose London because I saw it as kind of like the capital of the world in a way, even more so than New York or LA. Like I just love traveling and experiencing different cultures and being put out of my comfort zone. I think you really have to go somewhere, whether it's to London or America or Australia, to really experience what it's like to live there. I was really looking for international, uh, um, international experience. One specific trip to London, uh, there was like something about a city that uh, was really appealing. Um, the fact that um, I felt already comfortable uh, in a city. This was something that I really wanted to do. This is a destination that I really wanted to, um, to go to. I remember the day when I was sitting in front of my desk and I looked at my colleague who was next to me. Oh my God, this is going to be my life. I'm going to be coming into the same office every day until I'm going to you know, retire. I was just like, no, I can't. <laughs> I, have to, I have to discover life. I was scared.
scared, which I didn't think I, I would be. I believe in the power of meeting people and uh, knowing different cultures. I was open to the adventure, let's say that, because it's always an adventure when you don't know what's going to happen. A family in East Yorkshire, <laughs> Bridlington, <laughs> and they were the first one who, who decided like, oh yeah, we would, like to, we would like to have you around. And I was just like, okay, let's go for it. When I came here, straight away, I was like, this is my world. I belong here. He missed Italy a lot. My I friends. didn't, especially because I didn't have that plan that I, I said I, I had. That is how we work, maybe. I take risk and it, it keep me on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. I answered the question, so how long have you been in London? I said five years. So you're Londoner. Uh, that, that was the moment where it clicked that I might actually really live here now. But it is a very lonely place when you first come over here. People just are always stressed out, they need to pay the rent and all that stuff. And you actually don't have much money left over. And so when someone's finished work, they just want to get home, and so that's why everyone's in a rush. The social aspect of living in London is really difficult. It's so hard to meet people in London because there's so many people. It's a bit of a catch-22. I think in the beginning I had to learn how to... Um learn how to uh, do business in a, in a British way, let's say. And uh, it was more about uh, making people feel welcome first and then drop the message or then uh, carry on with business. I found exactly what I was expecting from London because it's, it's a multicultural city and it's a, it's a city that works actually and uh, everything. Well, I, I found London a really, really, a really good place to live. It's the most expensive place to live pretty much in the world kind of thing. The cost of living is definitely a challenging part of London. It still was like shocking just how expensive food is here. Um, I mean, obviously when you go to a supermarket and stuff, it's a bit more reasonable, but if you go into like a, a Pret or somewhere and you get a coffee, it's, you know, 350, almost four pounds sometimes. It's frustrating that I can't sort of get out and about. I've got a pretty good paying job having a flat in central London. Um, I pretty much work and sleep and food shop and maybe go for a pint every now and then after work. It's a city that is rich. Um, but sometimes it's really hard to see uh, in the streets. Uh, you have a lot of homeless people. And um, I mean, it, it puts things in perspective, um, the amount of poor people that we have in the city. I don't know if we can do something about that. Um, I'm not sure about like if I can do something about that as well, but it's something that uh, frustrates me a little bit more. It's a common thing to say, but it's so true in that London is so fast-paced. So when normal people talk uh, in a normal speed, Londoners will triple that, walk five times as fast. Give me a minute. If you don't have a minute, you have two seconds, mate. <laughs> so you kind of adapt and kind of grow into that kind of mentality of you need to get things done straight away. It's just like any other city, it's pollution, a lot of people. The bit that, that makes a Londoner is the fact, the awareness, we're surrounded by people.
sometimes they don't realize what they have. They've got, I don't know many lines of tubes. In Rome, which is the, most, the busiest city in Italy, we've got two lines and we took about 20 years to build the third line, yeah. which is the shortest one we have. And, uh, and uh, we spent more than Amsterdam and more than any city in Europe to build that line and we took 20 years. 20 years, like in London in 20 years they build another city. You get on to the tube with hundreds of people that you are literally pressed up against with them breathing on you, you know, you're sharing 50% of your body mass with them and yet you do everything to avoid eye contact, you know, or say something. And if you say something, they think you're f***ing weird and then you feel uncomfortable and that's ruined your whole tube ride like for the rest of the time you're on there. We were at our stop and I was close to the door. Door gets opened and uh, I go out to let everybody out who wanted to go out. And then I was expecting to be the first one to get in. And uh, everybody else got in except me. <laughs> and the tube was gone. <laughs> one of the first things I noticed about the cultural difference um, was when I went to the tube for the first time and people were rushing to get onto the tube. And the next train that was coming was literally in one minute's time. Um, in Australia, if you miss it, it's another 15 minutes, but that's fine, you know? But 15 minutes, if it's in London, it's like, oh God, 15 minutes, what are you gonna do for 15 minutes? frustrated sometimes when I uh, wait the bus for seven minutes and then I realized that in Italy I used to wait for two hours four hours and I would never know if the bus is actually even coming at some point. As far as public transport goes it is incredible over here so there's no need to drive. It's terrifying. <laughs> Exciting but terrifying. <laughs> I would never ever want to get into a car or behind the wheel in London. You know, the commute is, is horrendous. But I think everybody, uh, yeah, London is just famous from this. <laughs> the commute is, is, is a hell. People feel quite entitled, I think, when they're driving around and they get quite shitty quite quickly. One thing which is very small but quite liberating for me was in Australia you can't jaywalk. Uh, if you do, you get like a 50 or $60 fine. Um, so when I moved here and I realised that I could do whatever I want, I had unlimited freedom to go across the roads and do whatever. It was glorious. It was very exciting. I, felt, I still feel like a rebel every time I do it. And also pedestrians have a mind of their own as well, especially at Bloomin, giant intersections like the Oxford Circuits intersection. You know, they just walk, like a, they have to be some, somewhere, you know, and their time is the most important time, so they just, they just head on out. My life obviously means more to me than this does to them, <laughs> but... Um, I like cycling in London. Um, stick the D-lock in the back pocket and then hit traffic, and I, I quite like that. We can go out at any time during the day or night and it will be buzzing. That's something that I, f I fell in love with and that's the reason why I'm staying here. I love the fact that it's busy. I love the fact that there is life almost 24 hours a day. Externally, when you're just going down the streets, it still looks very old. Architecturally, it's very different. So I like the new and modern because it's, it's yeah, clean and can be quite minimalistic and just very well designed, but also like the older designs as well. Um, in some cases, because it kind of has that old historical feel to it, um, sometimes at the expense of you know, consistent hot water and electricity, which I had a problem in my first house in Vauxhall, um, which ironically was worth about three and a half million pounds, but still had problems with that. So, hashtag London. Bars and pubs and clubs close so early. <laughs> So I had this conversation with uh, with many of my uh, colleagues from Spain, and uh, they find it really 
like shocking for them to for a pub or for a club or anything to close at one or two o'clock in the morning uh, for them is like when that's that's when the party starts and the sense of humor is pretty pretty unique as well british humor is the best sense of humor they've always got great stories uh just really brilliant to talk to it's a very interesting landscape it's a very um deeply rooted Anglo-Saxon culture, but London even has its own very special way of doing this. I, I like that a lot. Brixton back in the days was like really very loud and youth on the street and sometimes you think, oh, because they are loud or because they behave differently, they are dangerous. No, it's just how they have fun. Uh, this is how they interact with people. So you just have to be you know, open-minded about different culture. Going, going to like rooftop parties or rooftop cinemas, um, silent discos, um, you know, all these crazy events, you know, you use Y-Plan and Y-Plan tells you about all these events going on in London. If there's something that you want to do, you can do it. And that's one thing I love about it. And I, I think if I eventually do move back to Australia, I'll miss because there's so many things you can do and so much variety. Competition is frustrating, but it's good because it brings here the best people from all over the world. I love how close it is to everywhere. So you're so close to Europe and parts of America. I think the fact that my colleagues were all internationals, like most of them were international and now we had our bosses uh, were English. It, it made it so special in, in the way where um, you could ask anybody anything, um, strengthen the team in terms of uh, knowledge and also in terms of uh, cultural richness. pushed me to fight my prejudice and I think that it's making me a better person. Knowing people from, from all around the world, different cultures, different cousins as well, you know, uh, you, have, you, can, you can learn so much. In Italy we, we breathe fear of different people, but you know, in Italy we are not used to uh, Welcome yeah. people. Welcome, yeah. Technology and in uh, embracing other cultures and people, uh, that is something that we don't have in Italy. So with this whole Brexit thing, with the whole change, I didn't really have a clue what was going on. Brexit uh, was a... Uh, I, I really had hope, high hopes for the yes to, uh, the, or the Remain campaign to, uh, to really uh, win it. I'm not going to pretend to be the most politically intelligent person, but um, for what I do know and what, how it's going to affect me personally, um, I just think it was definitely the wrong move. I voted to stay in. Nobody reassured us that there was a plan after that. You know, nobody gave any reassurance that they had steps in place to follow after that happened. It was all very much, you should stay or you should go, you know, vote either way because then people were voting for something that they didn't really understand. We're talking about talents here. We're talking about people that have been here and, and, and are still here um, helping to grow the economy. But it's created this, this segregation between countries that we were originally quite unified with. Like Germany has already issues with us since Brexit. As a global cultural thing, basically it's, it's segregating us again. When it comes to to tolerance and when it comes to how people live together and, and yes there are limits and there's there's you know there's 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 the odd bit of friction but I think London is almost a, a, one of the few places on earth where people of so many different backgrounds jobs religions languages and you know ethnic groups living together without bashing their heads in on a daily basis I think it's 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 pretty cool but most of all, I just feel like there needs 
to be reassurance about where we're going to go. You know, Britain survived outside of the EU for as long as it did. Um, it did really well inside of the EU, but this isn't really anything different to what you know Britain's gone through before. And maybe in 10 years, I'll, I'll be sitting here and, and uh, we'll talk maybe about the good side of the Brexit, but at this moment, I cannot see any, any good side. And it's just, it's, I think when, you know, countries and the world is unified, when you know, things go wrong, when things go really well, it's something that's really beautiful. That having that on a global scale was something great and something that we had with the EU, um, and now it looks like we won't. So I think it's just culturally, I think it's a really sad thing. It is kind of like um, history repeating himself, like re uh, repeating itself like over and over again on, on, on how conflicts have, um, have started and it's always about division and this is a case where we're, we, we, were, we are creating more division and we're creating more split. As care for London, to me London is like the jewel of diamond, you know, uh, all these cultures messed up together, all these, all these you know, uh, ideas, uh, companies, you know, everything. I'm scared that, that London, as we know it now, can finish, and I think it's, you know, it's really sad. I don't want the multicultural side of London to be lost. I think that's a really important thing. It came as a wave, like a shock wave, and you could see people in the tube were, were concerned. I don't want the UK to feel segregated. And it basically means that going around Europe, which is a big thing that I came here in the first place, um, will be a lot more challenging. Obviously I can still do it, but it's not as easy and seamless as it is right now. London is it's a very, very good city. I mean, you've got so many different people from different backgrounds. The way people are taking to you is something then which is great. Let's say if I go back to Italy, I will miss, for example, everything. Everything. You are free to dress up as you want, to speak any language you want, to eat what you want, how you want. Nobody's going to look at you badly. There is availability of almost anything at almost any given time. I think London is a really good place to experience in your in your twenties, beginning of thirties. I think this is the this is the place to be. I will miss like small phrases uh, such as uh, love, <laughs> things like that. It's, it makes you, it, it made me laugh the first time I heard it. I was like, hey, are you flirting with me? <laughs> But it's something uh, that comes up uh, uh, very regularly. I'd miss the beauty of the city as well. Whether it's winter or summer, it's a really, really beautiful place to be. And it, it feels like an amazing place of possibilities as well because it's so big and because it's so diverse and because there's so much going on. So I know I will go back to Australia at some point, whether it's a year from now or five years from now. Um, it's, I always, when I'm, you know, 60, 70 years old, I'm always going to look back at this time, as cheesy as it sounds, um, and think of it very fondly. We're bringing the best of our culture and we are taking the best of this culture, so it comes out with a great. We are part of a wider community and a wider world. We all need to come together. Yeah, for fun, for your, for your, you know. Uh, personal development in your early years, definitely. The, the other bit is I think you won't find traffic like this anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> um, the simple things that makes London uh, so special, I think people from London don't really see that, uh, don't, don't really notice the, the details, the small things, the customer service, um, yeah, the level of politeness, um, having tubes arriving two, three minutes apart from each other. You know, yeah, the small things.
The people make the country, right? So, you know, Britain wouldn't be a great country if it didn't have great people. Got very strong friendships here. Um, fell in love here. I've grown a lot more as an individual and become a lot more stronger as an individual. And um, I, I remember it as a time when I, I learned a lot about myself and I met some amazing people, um, literally dozens and dozens of people that I love so much and I know that I'll be in contact with for, with the rest of my life.